Hi friends, today we will discuss upon the topic financial instruments. If you check this chapter in CA final syllabus, this is almost covers 15 to 25 percentage of syllabus. That means this is a major portion, this is a critical portion as far as CA final paper is concerned. And when it comes to your elective paper, you have chosen GFRS, Global Financial Reporting Standards as your CA final level, elective paper, optional paper, paper 6. Then, when it comes to each case study, there will be some component of financial statement, financial instruments which is hidden in the question, so which is directly given in the question. So, why institute is giving so much importance to this set of standards, that is financial instruments? For that purpose, first we will understand the structure of balance sheet, structure of entire balance sheet as per Division 2 of Schedule 3 to the Companies Act 2013. If you check the asset side of balance sheet, you will be having property plan and equipment in under non-current assets, you will be having property plan and equipment, intangible assets, investment property, intangible assets under development, capital work in progress, goodwill. After that, all loans and advances, investments, certain other items, all these grouped under a category known as financial assets. Then when it comes to current assets also, except inventories and certain other items all items are covered under financial assets and when it comes to the equity and liability part there is equity part that is equity share capital and the other equity component then when it comes to the non-current liabilities there also we can see that something known as financial liabilities when it comes to current liabilities also, we can see something known as current liabilities, financial liabilities. So, if you check this AS balance sheet and entire balance sheet, this terminology, financial assets, financial liability, this terminology we cannot see in this financial statements. So, this concept of financial asset, financial liability, all these is coming from this one set of standards. So, if you check the balance sheet, a major portion of this financial statements is being governed by this single set of standard that is India's 32, 109 and 107. So without the knowledge of these set of standards, you cannot audit a India's complaint financial statements. That is why India's is given, this institute is giving so much importance to this concept of financial instruments and the problems relating to financial instruments. As I said earlier, this is a standard which governs most of the items which is there in the financial statements. Let us put it in another way. This is a residuary set of standards which governs the items which are not being covered by any other specific accounting standards. Most of the items which are not covered by any specific accounting standards will be dealt with by this standard. So, this covers most of the elements in balance sheets such as borrowings, loans and advances, your investments, trade receivable, trade payables, security deposits, your equity share capital, preference share capital, all these items will be covered under the standard. So the scope of this standard is much wider. This covers most of the items in the balance sheet. So in order to have a uniform standard, in order to have a single standard for these many items, they had given single set of principles so that this that is why the students are feeling the standard is a little bit tough so let's try to decode what is the meaning of financial instruments so let's now try to decode the definition of financial instruments if you see the financial instruments the definition of financial statements financial instruments which is set out in this standard that is in day s32 a financial instrument refers to any contract that gives rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or equity instrument of another entity. So this is a simple definition. If you check the definition, this is much simple. So this states that this financial instrument, in order to classify an item as a financial instrument, first it should be based on some contract. There should be some contractual obligation, there should be some contractual rights, this should be 
give rise to a financial asset in the books of one entity and a corresponding financial liability or equity in the books of another entity. So, in this definition, we have to understand four terminologies. First one is what is the meaning of contract? Whether this meaning of contract is substantially different from what we understood in contract act? Whether in substance this contract, meaning of this contract is same in line with this contract act or what we understand as a contract? Second one, what is the meaning of this financial asset? Third one, what is the meaning of this financial liability? Fourth one, what is the meaning of equity instrument? So these four things we have to understand, then only we can comprehend this definition. So it looked like a simple definition, but this is a definition which can be understood only if we know these four terminologies. So we'll first focus on these four terminologies and afterwards we'll come to this definition. What items will be covered? We'll take as many items as we can and take and understand whether this is a financial asset or not. In each items we'll describe what items cannot be considered as financial instruments as well because of those conditions set out in this, those definitions. So first we'll try to decode what is the meaning of contract? As per the standard, contract means it is an agreement. Contract refers to an agreement between two or more parties, usually enforceable by law, that has clear economic consequences and which parties usually bound to adhere. That means the definition of contract as set out in the standard is much same as what is the definition of a contract as per contract act. That is the contract act defines a contract as an agreement enforceable under law. So if you check this standard as well, first one there should be one agreement that should be enforceable by a court of law. Then only this will become a contract. Third thing, it should have clear economic consequence and the parties are usually bound to adhere to these conditions. If it is an agreement and if it is legally enforceable, that the third condition will automatically get satisfied. So, when it comes to the meaning of contract, this is the same as what we had learned in contract act. What is, what is a contract? What is we understood in common parlance? That is the meaning of this contract, which is set out in this standard as well. But if you look at this, this financial instruments definition states that financial instruments is any contract that give rise to. So this first point is that there should be a contract. So anything other than contract is not covered under the standard. So what all items we can exclude from the scope of the standard by this definition of contract itself. We'll take two items which two major items which we see. First one is that income tax or any statutory liabilities or statutory uh, any amount which is withheld by statutory authorities, input tax credit, all these items, all statutory items. This income tax or any other indirect tax liabilities, all these cannot be considered as a financial instrument or more particularly a financial assets or financial liability. Why? Because this is not from any contract. There is no contract between the taxpayer and the government. This is a levy they had put on the taxpayers. They have to pay this money if they do this. So there is no reciprocal promises. There is no agreement. This is not a contract. Accordingly, any statutory dues, any statutory liabilities, current tax assets, current tax liabilities, all these items will be excluded from the scope of the standard that is financial instruments. Second item is constructive obligation which is covered under India's 37. So if you are seeing India is for the first time you may not understand what is the meaning of constructive obligation. Constructive obligation is simple that is for example, if there is an employee and employer, usually employer gives 
an amount of rupees 5000 at each festivals so there is the other than this amount is being given other than that is set out in this bonus act they are paying bonus as per the bonus act in addition to that they are paying this festival advances or festival uh, allowances so one in one festival they are not paying this amount whether the employees can sue on the employer whether this is come as a legal obligation whether this festival allowance is a legal obligation as far as this employer is concerned if this is there in the contract of employment that festival allowance of this much will be paid or this festival allowance of this will be paid in these these occasions then this is a legal legally enforceable item that is as part of their agreement but if there is no such condition on a customary basis the as employer is providing this then this employee cannot sue the employer for not paying this because this is not a legal obligation this is just a constructive obligation this does not have any legal consequence this is being this is being set out as an obligation only because as a customary practice we are paying that amount all those type of items are considered as constructive obligations since this constructive obligations is not enforceable by law this will not cover under the purview of the standard so these are the two items which will not be covered under the standard since there is no contract once again we can recap what is the definition of a financial instrument financial instruments refers to any contract that give rise to a any contract that give rise to a financial asset in the books of one entity and a corresponding financial liability or equity in the books of another entity so first we had covered what is contract now let's try to decode what you mean by a financial asset unlike the definition of a contract the definition of financial asset is set out as a list. This is an inclusive list. They said that financial asset comprise of these items. They had given four or five items which is covered under financial assets. So now we will try to decode each of those items which is set out in this definition. So first one that is cash. Whether a cash is a financial instrument whether it is a financial asset first of all in order to classify it as a financial instrument more particularly a financial asset there should be a contractual obligation whether there is any contractual obligation in, in cash in order to understand that first we have to understand what is the meaning of cash as per this standard cash is not defined in india's 32 109 or 107 but it is defined in india's 7 on statement of cash flows the standard states that cash means it is the cash in hand and the demand deposits with banks so both will be covered under this the meaning of cash so first cash that is our money whether it is a contractual obligation or contractual right as far as this company or entity is concerned if you check a currency note if you check a currency note there will be something written in English and there will be a sign on beneath by our RPA governor. That sentence is that I promise to pay the bearer a sum of rupees this much. This is like this is the wording there in, in that currency note. In each currency note except for one rupee, all currency note will have this wordings. That means these currency notes are nothing but these are promissory notes. As you know, promissory notes are covered under contract act. That is, this is a legally enforceable contract. That means there is a contractual obligation. Whether this cash will create asset in the books of one entity and a corresponding liability in the books of another entity. It is obviously asset in our books because it is a medium of exchange but whether it is a liability in somebody else's books or equity in somebody else's books yes this is a liability in the books of reserve bank of india so this cash this exchange money 
can be considered as a financial asset. This will come under the purview of financial instruments. Second one, demand deposits with banks. If you check the deposit with banks, we had opened a bank account. We had deposited that amount. By depositing that amount, there is an implied contract or we had given an application. That application and this all these constitute a contract, a legally enforceable contract. And whenever we ask for this money, the bank is liable to pay that amount. That is the demand deposits. So, it is an asset in our books. That is, we had deposited that much amount. But in the books of bank, it will be a liability as deposits accepted from its customers. So, this is as part of a contract. This is an asset in our books. This is a liability in bank's books. That means this balances with bank is also a financial asset. Next one is the next item set out in the standard that is equity instrument of another entity. As far as we are concerned, this is an investment in our books and as far as the investee is concerned, for them, this is their equity, their equity share capital. So, it is also a financial instrument, more particularly a financial asset. Then the third item in this definition is a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity. So first they had talked about there should be a contractual right, receive cash or another financial asset. So by this, by this item, most of the items, most of the trade items will be covered under this standard. That is, if we had given loan to someone, that means they have to repay that amount. This is an asset in our books. This is a liability in their books. There is a contract between us. So, we are having a contractual right to receive cash. So, loan given is a financial asset. Trade receivable. We had given them goods. There is a sale of goods contract. As far as this contract is concerned, they have to pay that much amount to us. There is a contractual right to us. Till that amount is being received, we are having a contractual right to receive cash. So this is also a this is also a financial asset. Or if you check any other items like bills payable, uh, sorry, bills receivable or security deposits given, likewise, any item which is coming as part of a contract, lease receivable, all these items will be covered under this third items. But Due to this third item only, we can exclude, two items are being excluded from the definition of the standard. First one is that physical assets, leased assets and intangible assets. If you check the physical assets, it is an asset in our books. But there is no contractual right to receive any amount. Further, this will not be a liability in any other person's books. If you check leased asset as well, leased assets we will record here. Correspondingly, we will create a leased liability. That liability is contractual obligation. But we does not have any contractual right on this asset. We are having that asset. We are carrying that asset. So, this is an asset for us, but this does not have any other liability in anyone else's books. So, that is also not a financial instrument or financial asset. The intangible asset, same goes to intangible assets, inventories and all. Second item is that prepaid expense. When it comes to prepaid expense, we are, we are having contractual right. But that contractual right is not to receive any cash or another financial asset. If we had incurred some insurance expense, we had taken an insurance on 1st of October 2019 and this will for a period of one year. That means from 1st of October 2019 to 31st March 2020 is current year expense and balance six months is pertains to the next financial year. Whether we will get back that amount back? No. Under those period for next six months will be under insurance protection. They will be providing one service. That is the contractual right we are having. We will not receive any amount back. We will not receive any other financial asset. 
So, because of this, any prepaid expense is also excluded from the definition of financial assets and financial instruments. So, physical assets, leased assets, for the physical assets, leased assets, intangible assets, inventories, prepaid expenses, all these items will not come under the purview of financial assets. So, next we will try to decode some two important aspects that is little bit complex items which is uh, more particularly relates to derivatives or your something related to your SFM paper as well. So the fourth component in this financial asset is that it is a contractual right to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities under conditions that are potentially favorable to the entity. So three conditions are there. First one there should be a contractual right. Second one, there should be an exchange of financial assets or financial liabilities. Third one, in exchange, the condition as applicable to this entity is that it should be potentially favorable to this entity. So, let us try to decode this with an example. There is a company A Limited. They are giving an option to B Limited. They are collecting some premium and they are giving an option to B Limited that on 1-12-2019, they can purchase 500 shares of rupees, 500 shares of rupees 10 each of A Limited at a price of rupees 50 each. Whatever be the market price, A Limited can sell, B Limited can purchase this many shares if they are exercising this option. This is just an option, this is not an obligation. Because they are not mandatorily required to do this. They are they are having an option. Either they can use that option or they can lapse it. So, on 1-12-2019, if you look at that share price, the share price has gone up to rupees 60 rupees. That means, what is the market value of shares? 500 shares of 10 each having a market value of 60 rupees. That is 30,000. But, what is the advantage which is there for B limited? They are having an option. If they are exercising that option, A limited has to sell 500 shares at a rate of rupees 50. So, in this situation, they are having a right to purchase shares at less than market rate. That means, in this case, they are having a favorable position. They are having a favorable market condition. So, from this example, we will try to decode what is there, whether this will a financial asset or financial liability, financial asset. So, whether there is a contractual obligation, yes, there is a contract between them, they had paid some premium to A limited and they had received an option to purchase 500 shares at the rate of 50. So, there is a reciprocal promises, there is consideration, so it is a contract and that is legally enforceable as well. Whether there is an exchange of financial assets or financial liabilities, yes, there is an exchange of financial assets. B limited will pay cash and A limited will give shares. Shares is an equity instrument that is a financial asset. Then, Cash is also a financial asset. So, there is an exchange of financial assets. And as far as B limited is concerned, they are in a potentially favorable situation. That means, they will gain out of this transaction. They are having favorable position. So, they are potentially favorable. They are, there is a condition that is potentially favorable to this entity. So, this is a financial asset. How this will become a financial asset? There is a contract. This is an asset in our books because this is favorable to us. As far as A limited is concerned, this is detrimental to them or unfavorable to them. So, this is a financial liability for them. So, this is the definition of, this is the fourth element in the definition of financial asset. The last component in this financial assets definition is that a contract that will be or may be settled in entity's own equity instruments. For this, they had given known derivative contract, variable number of shares, derivative contract, fixed number of shares. Before going to that in detail, first we should understand that this part is redundant in India. Just because of the fact that 
as per companies act we cannot hold our own shares it will amount to buyback no company can purchase their own shares other than in a scheme of in a scheme of buyback so since the concept of treasury stock which is there in foreign countries that is holding our own shares is not applicable in india not permitted in india this part of this definition is redundant that is we cannot an indian company cannot enter into a transaction which will be settled in entity's own equity instruments so we are not going to the detail of this part of the definition because this is redundant in india itself so now let's try to recap what is the definition of financial asset financial asset comprise of cash equity uh, equity instrument of another entity contractual right to receive cash or any other financial assets of another entity next one is that any contract in which there will be an exchange of financial asset or financial liability under conditions which are potentially favorable to that entity and the fifth part which is not applicable in india is that a contract that will be or may be settled in entity's own equity instruments and if it is a non derivative contract that will be settled in variable number of shares if it is a derivative contract it will be settled in fixed number of shares if any one of this item is being satisfying for a contra or contractual right then it can be classified as a financial asset only when that will give rise to a financial liability in the books of another entity also so now let's we have to decode what is the meaning of financial liability and equity instrument as far as the standard is concerned now let's try to understand the definition of financial liabilities if we had understand what is financial asset it is quite simple to understand what is a financial liability because this is the other part of financial assets because first one let's check the first one that is there there was cash so cash we had excluded second one equity instrument of another entity that also we had excluded because that is separately dealt with equity instrument there is separate definition is there third one third one what is the definition of financial asset a contractual right to receive cash or another financial liability to another from another entity here what is first one is that a contractual obligation to deliver cash or another financial asset to another party for example if we had made a sale to a party trade receivable will be there that trade receivable will be a financial asset for our company from the view point of a purchaser they have purchased some goods for that purchase they have to give some amount to us right so there is a contractual obligation for them they have to either deliver cash or any other financial asset in return so that will be a financial liability for them so first part is there is the just opposite of what is there in the third point of a financial asset next one is that what was there as fourth component a contractual right to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities under conditions that are potentially favorable to the entity what is here here there is a contractual obligation to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities under conditions that are potentially unfavorable to the entity so here also we had talked about an example of a limited and b limited in that a limited and b limited example as far as b limited is concerned this was a financial asset because they are having a right to exchange financial asset for a lesser price than market value but as far as a limited is concerned they are having a contractual obligation to exchange financial asset at a price which is less than the market price that means they have to sell they have to sell an asset at a lesser rate that contractual obligation is a liability for them so this is a financial liability so this is just opposite us of point number 3 and point number 4 of financial asset now let's try to decode the 
fifth component, fifth, fourth and last component in the financial liabilities part. That is a contract that will be or may be settled in the entity's own equity instrument and if it is non-derivative contract, we are obliged to deliver variable number of equity shares. If it is a derivative contract, we are obliged to deliver fixed number of equity instruments. So, as far as financial asset is concerned, if a contract that will be settled in our own equity instruments, our own equity shares, that will be prohibited. But as far as this liabilities is concerned, if you are issuing equity shares, there is no legal bar we can issue shares in exchange for in exchange for fixed asset in, for conversion of loan all this purpose we can issue our own shares so these type of transaction will be covered under this so first one is that a non derivative contract that will be settled in variable number of equity shares we have to issue variable number of equity shares that is if it is a non derivative contract that means the value of these shares, value of this contract is no, will not change based on the value of shares. The amount should be fixed. So, variable number of shares will be issued. If it is a non-derivative contract, amount is fixed. So, the number of shares will be variable. So, for example, we had purchased a missionary costing rupees 10 lakhs from a vendor. Instead of that, we are issuing shares. For that, they will be, we will be issuing shares after 30 days. We cannot say that this much shares we will be issuing, we will not know what will be the share price at that point of time. We can only say that we will issue shares worth 10 lakh at that point of time. So, the number of shares will be variable and the consideration amount will be fixed. That is the first component, a non-derivative contract for which Entity is obliged to deliver a variable number of equity, uh, equity instruments. So, if in a contract we have to issue shares and the amount is fixed, those type of contract will be considered as a financial liability. Second one, derivative contracts. A fixed number of entities own equity instruments is, is to be issued. For example, we are having convertible debentures. What is the speciality of convertible debentures? It can be converted into equity. What we will be saying? This one debenture can be converted into 10 equity shares of rupees 10 each. That may be the condition. They are not stating that this much value. They say that you are having an option to you are having an option to convert this debentures into shares. In such event, you will get this many shares. So, there the number of shares is fixed. Value is not fixed. So, they are having an option. At the time of redemption, if the share price is high and if it is beneficial to them to convert into equity, then they will convert into equity. If they are not beneficial, they will go for cash. This is what happens in a convertible dimensions. So, that right, that right to convert is a derivative contract they are having an option so that derivative contract will be settled in fixed number of shares if it is a derivative contract that should be fixed that should be in fixed number of shares the value changes according to the value of shares so all these type of transactions will be covered under financial liabilities so what we had understood what is a financial liability what is a financial asset what is a contract now what we had left out is what is the meaning of equity instrument so let's try to decode what is the meaning of equity instrument there is an important change when it comes to as to AS. so we'll try to decode the definition of equity instrument as well the definition of equity instrument in India is that it is a contract that evidences a residual interest in the asset of an entity after deducting all its liabilities. So, what is in it? Whether all type of share capital will be considered as equity instrument? Whether share capital only be considered as equity instrument? No. The answer to both the questions will be no. First one, all type of share capital will not be considered as equity 
that is if any contract that gives residual interest in the net assets of the entity such contracts only will be considered as a equity instrument so whether an equity share capital whether equity share capital is an equity instrument yes obviously the word itself is equity share capital they are the real owners of the entity they are the persons who are making the decision at the time of liquidation they are the person who are receiving the money who after deducting all assets all liabilities from the assets whatever remaining amount will be received by these equity shareholders so they are the real owners these equity shares are your equity instruments then whether the preference shares is an equity instrument their shares right then it will be considered as equity right no under in days under in days we have to give more focus towards substance over form concept so in substance we have to check whether this preference share capital is a debt or whether this is an equity so what is the definition of equity a contract that evidences a residual interest in the assets of the entity after deducting all its liabilities so let's try to decode what is the definition what is the characteristics of a preference share capital what is the preferential rights they are enjoying first one is that they will get fixed dividend before paying that dividend to equity shareholders second one at the time of liquidation or winding up they will be paid before the equity shareholders are being settled they only get back their own money they will not get any contribution of profit other than their preference dividend the dividend is fixed as well so they does not have any residual interest in the net assets of the entity at the time of liquidation they only get back what is the capital they had infused that means what is remaining in the company is not a right as far as the preference shareholders are concerned so as far as them they are not the real owners of the company accordingly they are not equity instruments that is why if you check the indias balance sheet under equity under shareholders fund under as balance sheet there was shareholders fund in indias it is equity only in that equity share capital other equity there is no field in which we can give preference share capital preference share capital we have to consider it as a debt if it is a plain preference share capital normal preference share capital if it is a convertible preference share capital if it is a participating share capital some component some component of this preference share capital may be equity because they are having an option to convert it to equity and if it is a participating in excess of what they had received as preference dividend they will get some more money so if these two characteristics are there in a preference share capital then then a small component of that preference share capital is equity balance is debt you have to segregate them and only equity part is to be taken to other equity and balance part we have to take to debt itself that is the guidance given in this standard as well so as far as this equity instrument is concerned under indias preference share capital will no longer classified as your share capital it will be considered as a debt only sometimes a component of this debt may be classified under your other equity component so this is the definition of equity instrument now let's recap the definition of financial instruments financial instruments is a contract that give rise to a financial asset in the books of one entity and a corresponding financial liability or equity instrument in the books of another entity so contract that means it should be legally enforceable that should, that may be written oral or by customary as pra uh, practice all this will be accepted tacit contract implied contract express contract whatever is enforceable under law that is been accepted financial asset we are having a five items cash exchange financial 
uh, equity instrument of another entity, contractual right to receive cash or any other financial asset from another entity, a contractual right to receive financial asset or financial liability under conditions which are potentially favorable to that entity, a contract that will be or may be settled in entity's own equity shares if it is a non-derivative contract, variable number of shares will be received. If it is a derivative contract, will be received fixed number of shares. These are the financial assets part. Financial liabilities part, a contractual obligation to deliver cash or any other financial asset to any other entity. Then a contractual obligation to deliver or exchange financial assets or financial liabilities under conditions potentially unfavorable to that entity. Then a contract that may be or will be settled in entity's own equity shares wherein if it is a non-derivative contract we have to deliver fixed num variable number of equity shares. If it is a derivative contract we have to deliver fixed number of equity shares. So this is the definition of financial asset and equity instrument a contract that evidences residual interest in the assets of the entity. So if we comprehend these definitions we can have a bird's eye view of financial instruments. So what is covered under financial instrument? Whether PP is covered? No. Inventories? No. Investment? Yes. Lease assets? No. Lease liability? Yes. Likewise, if you look at each item, you should check whether there is contract first, then you should check whether it is an asset or liability. If it is an asset, you check all those five items. If in any bucket this item is getting fixed, fit, then there is a financial asset. If it is a liability, you check whether it will fit under any of this bucket, then that will be taken into account. Then that is a financial liability. And equity instrument, residual interest in a contract that evidences residual interest, that will be an equity instrument. All these items will be covered under this standard. The basic principle of the standard is that every financial instrument is to be accounted based on the concept of fair value. Secondly, based on the principle of substance over form. These are the primary principles which has been included in the standard. First one, this should be accounted based on fair value concept and second one, substance over form concept. If these two items are being kept in mind and if you know this definition, you can understand how this is to be dealt with. We will discuss what all are the accounting treatment with respect to financial asset, financial liability, equity, how a compound financial instrument is to be accounted for, how a derivative contract, derivatives are to be accounted, how hedge accounting to be done, how to impair a financial assets or financial liability, how to de-recognize a financial asset or financial liability. All these guidance are there in the standard. So these topics we will understand in a step-by-step -step process. So with this, we will conclude this video. Your valuable feedback should also be given in, your, in the comments as well. So, we will upload the next topics soon and thank you. Thank you very much.